James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast. It's SEC Championship Week, and with that comes a film prep on Alabama. Now, if you've been watching for the past several weeks, we've done film breakdowns on Alabama each and every week since Florida and Alabama were basically playing the same opponents. You can check those out as well as checking this one out to get a full picture of Alabama. And perhaps maybe you don't even want to. Well, because Alabama is really good and Florida just lost to LSU. At any rate, if you want to take a look at what makes Alabama so good, then check out this video. And if you like the content and like the video, sub to this channel. Check out the podcast each and every Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. And drop us a dono on Patreon where you can support our efforts to bring you content that makes you a better football fan. Let's take a look at what Bama does on both offense and defense and why Nick Saban has created such a consistently good football team. We'll start off by looking at Alabama's offense and we'll look at them versus Auburn. We've already seen what they look like versus Tennessee, LSU, and Kentucky. We've been looking at the more recent games since that is most indicative of how Alabama is playing now versus the earlier season matchups they had. This play is second down and 10. Auburn was close in this game for a while. They played decent defense against Alabama. They also play them every single year. So they have a rather nice idea of what Alabama is trying to accomplish. They are a good film study opponent. So right away on second and 10, you're going to see that Auburn, and we're going to lose them on the screen here, is going to funnel all the receivers to their center high safety, which is off the screen here. So we're manned up, manned up, making sure we maintain outside leverage. And then manned up here, he's going to wait until this breaks to an out route, which is a good film study. If Alabama had, in fact, run a dig across the field, it would not have been so good for him. But the main key here is I want you to watch Mac Jones, and this is something Alabama does. So Alabama, although they're out of the, out of the shotgun here, is still going to run what you would consider to be more of a traditional play action. Take a look, play action, and then we're going to take a deep drop right deep drop we want to set here this is mimicking a seven step drop from under center and we're going to run three vertical routes with one check down there's our check down coming out of the backfield there from Najee Harris there it is and this is something Alabama will do so they're going to premeditate shots they want to take deep shots they want to run vertical routes and they will really stretch the field high low in this regard the reads are actually very simple for Mac Jones on these plays and there tends to be low danger primarily because of the job the offensive line does for him here he climbs the pocket nicely no one is open this is a nice job by Auburn no one's open and this ball goes nowhere near anyone we will get a second look at this here on CBS cameras just a half of it and you'll see the job Auburn does so right off the gate we're going to trail him here knowing we have safety help that you cannot see off your screen make sure we maintain this outside leverage here he's going to stay here also maintaining outside leverage expecting a route to come out and again that's almost certainly a film study route read versus just playing that way he was correct on this one and the same thing is happening on this side as we showed you earlier this allows a lot of traffic to occur here's a lot of traffic and coming into your screen here, you can see Devonta Smith and then a safety over top. Lots of contact, not a lot of space. Good defense here by Auburn. If you're going to defend Alabama's deep shots, it's almost always going to have to be with some physicality early on and then making sure you're slowing down those downfield rubs and meshes and crosses. If you allow them to get a good, clean head start and a good, clean release down the field, by the time they do mesh or cross, the timing is going to be perfect and is going to be very hard to defend. Third and 15 for Alabama on the very first drive. Alabama here is going to attempt to convert this first down with some deep routes. They're going to miss, and Auburn is going to drop into a, a little used, especially in college football, Tampa 2. Tampa 2, we're going to split the field here and here, and we're going to have this linebacker drop into this window to take away a post route or what beats a cover 2. That's precisely what Alabama is actually going to run. It's going to come from right here. He's going to run with them. The thing about Mac Jones, and this is one reason why I think that Kyle Trask is much better at reading the football field, uh, even though, again, it struggled with LSU, is Kyle Trask doesn't have this kind of time, and he also rarely has receivers that are this wide open on a consistent basis. When he does, he almost always finds the right one. If you look at the film on Mac Jones, this is not a knock against Mac Jones at all. He's not as often going to find the easy and wide open receiver like Kyle Trask does. Again, he's not facing the same kind of pressure the Trask is in general. That's not being a Trask apologist. It's just reality on film. This is a good example of that. Mac's going to have an absolutely great pocket, as you can see here in tons of time. 
He's going to take his chances with this throw here, which is obviously not a good one. There's not a good window there. They drop down into that Tampa 2 window. The safety is able to peel back here and help out. That's not the right throw in that situation. Instead, this is the right throw, and that's also your best receiver. And that's Devontae Smith. Now, you can't see this, unfortunately, on your film, but all he's going to run here is a dig. Again, he has tons of time, and you can't see it, but this linebacker here actually steps over to squeeze the tight end dropping down low. Very, very simple read. If he was simply looking here at this window, he would have seen this linebacker slide here, and he easily would have known he had this dig for a simple conversion. Now, no quarterback is perfect. Again, Trask, of course, misses these reads from time to time, but this is, as any Florida fan knows, one of Trask's favorite throws. Uh, Mac Jones will miss these from time to time, uh, so if you're Florida, you're going to hope you dodge some bullets like Auburn does here. Again, this is definitely an absolutely dodged bullet by Auburn's defense. They did not get pressure. They left the receiver wide open, but it was third and 15. So you're going to need to put Alabama at least in some situations where they can make mistakes. Auburn does so here and gets a stop early on. This is an example of what you don't want to see Florida do against Alabama. Alabama runs east-west plays and traditional screens really well. Auburn here is going to take a page out of Florida's defensive playbook. And right here, we're going to be three on three, but we're also going to be very, very soft. We'll see on the flip side, when we look at Bama's defense, my much preferred way of playing this, which is to play aggressively here on the center of these three receiver sets. But for now, let's watch how this plays out. Again, Auburn very soft. Right off the snap, they're backing up backing up this is way way too easy you cannot do this florida cannot do this you cannot allow them to have these kind of screen plays take a look at this he's out of there this is now a very very simple two on two block and they're going to gain 10 yards on this play you just can't let them do this now florida has let teams do this all season long i fully expect them to do this again on saturday so look for Bama to complete passes like these for first downs and for easy yardage should Florida do it? No. Will they do it? Probably. So expect Alabama to be successful on very simple east-west extended really run plays. Uh, the, the run functioning as a pass in this example here with these east-west screens. If you listen to the podcast, you know that I think Florida should play a double bracket coverage against Alabama. Now, there's a good chance that Waddle plays this weekend, which is going to change things even more for Florida. You can't triple bracket people. There's just not enough players. Uh, in that case, you probably bracket both Waddle and Smith. But assuming Waddle can't go full full steam ahead, uh, you definitely want to really bracket and double coverage Devontae Smith on basically every passing play, in my opinion. And you also want to double Mechie. I think those are the two things you're going to do most often. In this case, Auburn is going to have what looks to be a bracket coverage on Devontae Smith, but you don't want to do this either, especially if you're Florida. And they're going to run a route that they run nicely. They're taking advantage of how Auburn was playing them. And they're going to fake just for a second, like he's going to go to this dig. And instead, he's going to run a go, which is going to bring the safety down here to rob that because they are bracketing. And they're going to beat, essentially, a double team. Here it is, top of your screen. There's the hard pump fake by Mac Jones. Hard pump fake. And the safety bites completely, which you'll see he's here, not exactly staying on top of the deepest man, and too easy of a touchdown. So what can Florida do to combat this? Well, one, you don't really want to be allowing a free release. So if you're going to bracket somebody like Devontae Smith, I think what you should be doing is putting a player on the line of scrimmage most of the time to at least get an altered route on him. Why do you want to do this? Because if you're going to bracket cover, it's okay if Devontae even beats him with a free release situation because you still have a second defender there to help out. It's no good to bracket with both defenders off. That's very, very hard to do, especially against a very quick and explosive route runner like Devontae Smith. Again, I think you're far better off trying to alter his route early, which will change the timing. It'll change Mac Jones's read. It will change the play. I think that's the way Florida should bracket. Will they do it? Almost certainly not. Uh, but again, I think if you're Florida, you have to give something up. And if you listen to the pod, I think Florida would be wise to let Alabama run all over them and instead attempt to limit these big passes that they tend to get by bracketing Smith, bracketing Mechie, bracketing Waddle from time to time, obviously depending on his health, potentially more. Uh, but you cannot allow Alabama to kill you from the slot like they do here. And again, you cannot be off bracketing. You can't take the chance. They're too good at hitting those deep routes, and they're too good at it because their offensive line is too good at providing pass protection. So the best way to combat that, come up here, get a press on this, play very aggressive in the first five yards, and then let your bracket help from there.
If Florida wants to have a chance to win on Saturday against Alabama, they will have to obviously dodge some bullets. Again, we've mentioned this before, and this is not to pick on Mac Jones, but he will miss some reads that are rather easy. And if if by some by some miracle, and of course Florida's defensive line is good enough to do this, but Alabama's offensive line is extremely good, they can get pressure with just four, which you see Auburn do here, then they can cause Alabama to give up a rare sack. Now I'm showing you this play not because of a rare sack, but I'm showing you because Bama actually has two players wide open for huge plays. In fact, Mac Jones probably should have hit either one of these even despite the pressure. Take a look at the play here. We get the benefit of sky cam. You're going to get a corner route here or an over, and then you're going to get a go route from Devontae Smith. Either one of these can be thrown. Look at it from the quarterback cam. Again, we talked about how they're going to run from shotgun, what looks to be sort of a traditional play action. Check this out. Single back formation. Really, this looks, again, this is a traditional under center play action. Notice how we'll clear back. We're trying to hit a big play. We're going to set the pocket here. Everything is good at this point in time. He has either one of these throws right now. Safety is playing nobody. Can't get to this one. Can't get to this one. All he's got to do is put this ball out here. Probably a touchdown. Or put this ball out here. Probably a touchdown. He has both of these. He is going to take neither. Again, there's no reason for this. The reason he's taking neither is he is not looking there. He wants to hit this dig route coming across the field, which is essentially triple covered in reality. One, two, three. Uh, that's not going to happen. He still has time to get rid of this throw here. Take a look at this again here. Or here, safety's looking this way. He has either one of these, uh, does not hit either one of them, and instead takes a sack. So on Florida's back end, and I mentioned this on the podcast, if you can get the pre-snap look to be something that Mac Jones is not confident in or does not see well, he is not a great reader of the field post-snap. He's not somebody who's going to peel off and right now read, okay, I've got a safety looking this way. Uh, I see that I've got a lot of traffic here. Let me either take a look at the grass here or check my best receiver here and see if he's got a free release. Either one of those would have worked. He does not either. And again, this is not to pick on him. He's done a very, very good job. Obviously, he's doing what Bama wants him to do. But he will miss a lot of these reads. And each and every game you look at Mac Jones on film, uh, you'll see he does this. In this game, he actually throws five touchdowns. Right? It looks great on the stat sheet. But look, if you're playing for championships against a really good team, you miss enough of these plays, you're in trouble. And this is automatic. I mean, this is a layup. You can't get somebody more open than this. And again, this either, right? Those are easy throws. He has time. He's good to go here. I'm not picking on him, I promise. If you're a Bama fan, I'm not. I'm just showing you what's here on film. This exists. It's real. Uh, he misses these quite quite often, actually. Uh, doesn't see the field super well, in my opinion, for a guy who gets as much time as he gets. Uh, so Florida, terrible on defense, almost certainly going to give up all kinds of plays and whatever Alabama wants to do. But if we're assuming things are going well for Florida, they'd have to dodge several bullets like these. That can be done, of course, giving pressure and also confusing the pre-snap read of Mac Jones to get him reading the wrong receiver first for a second as he does not quickly move from read to read to read. Again, most college quarterbacks don't. So that's not the dog Mac Jones. When you're playing Alabama, as we've mentioned before, and we'll keep mentioning it, you cannot play passive on, the east, on these east-west plays. Here's a bunch set. Again, anytime you see a bunch set, whether it is here or it's over here or it's over here, in my opinion, you have to get somebody in here. You have to do this. This is the meta way to play that. This is the meta way to play this, and there's good reason for it, and here's why. Auburn's going to play this passive, much like Florida does, and when you play this passive, again, look, we're going to engage him three yards down the line of scrimmage, now we have a free blocker here, and we have a completely easy throw right down the field. He's not going to get touched. Look, there he goes. That's their best player, right? It's Devontae Smith, their best receiver, untouched in the backfield, second and 15, and we're going to pick up 20. That's just too easy. You cannot allow Alabama to beat you this way. You can't do it. Again, give extra attention to Devontae Smith. Bracket him. If you're going with a bracket plan, let's go to the pre-snap. We're in the bracket plan. We've got a guy in the line. We've got another one close here because we have bracket help with our safety. We're going to say, listen, wherever he goes, if he goes back into the backfield and you're assigned to him, you're shooting back there. We're going to make them beat us with someone else. We are not going to allow them to get these kind of completions on us. And this is a broken record, but I expect Florida to allow them to get all sorts of these kind of completions on us because that's what Grantham defenses do almost by design. Uh, but if it were me, it'd be a much different game plan. I think Florida would be wise again to play more aggressive on the line. And in general with bunch sets, 
I think it's wise to place him on the line for the reasons we mentioned in every single one of these film breakdowns. Bama is good at this. They will utilize these plays on any down and distance, especially when they know teams are backing off uh, in this fashion. All right, let's see if Auburn learned their lesson from the previous play. We get a bunch set again on this side. Now take a look at what Auburn does. Now we're in tight. Now we're going to get some hands on some people. Here we go. There's one. Let's make sure that we get hands here which we do. We're going to bracket coverage here. This is safety in between. We're going to make sure we maintain outside leverage, funnel this to the middle. Lots of contact here. Lots of contact here. Funneling this to the middle. These are all of the receivers Alabama is sending out, and they're all basically trapped nearly in between the hashes. That's what you want. We mentioned in the podcast that Alabama does not often send more than three receivers out. Sometimes they'll send four, and it's typically a very traditional. Uh, Najah Harris is a check down. Again, they can do this because they buy time and because, as you're seeing so often, they're going to send Mac Jones back to reset and they're trying to get chunk yards. This is obviously very sound, very fundamental offense. It's a good strategy. It's also easy to read. Not super complicated to make these reads. And here, Mac Jones, again, super clean pocket, plenty of time, nobody there. On the All-22, there was nobody there. It was very well covered by Auburn. And a lot of that started with a much more aggressive and non-passive approach on that bunch set on the far side of the field. It's second and 10 for Alabama, and you're gonna have to guess sometimes when they're running. Now, my preferred strategy in this game is quite a radical one. I would say, forget it, let them run. Let's make sure we're always bracketing Devontae Smith. I wouldn't do what Auburn's doing here. They're gonna play single high, very aggressively in the box, and they're doing it to stop Alabama's run game on second down and 10. They're playing a tendency, and they're playing the personnel that Bama has in the game. Now, this is optimal defense. Uh, but again, I think if your defense is inferior and you don't feel comfortable matching up, this is very, very risky. If Florida is playing any of their slot nickels, the star position, if you will, on Devontae Smith, it's over. Forget about it. Ain't happening. We can't risk that at all. If you want to get cute, as we mentioned in the pod, you could attempt to put Elam here and see how well that works for a few plays here and there to steal some chances. But there's not a single player on Florida's roster that we have used this season that can stay with Devontae Smith, not even close. So that's not going to be an option Florida should play, but it is important to illustrate at times in the game, Florida is going to have to take some exploitative chances. Exploitative being leave your meta strategy. The meta strategy, of course, is, in my opinion, to bracket Devontae Smith, to bracket Mechie, not allow them to get uh, really a lot of catches. Their offense flows first through Smith, then through Mechie, then through Najee Harris as far as in the pass game goes. So that's the order. Twice the targets here, twice the targets here of anyone else besides Smith and then Najee. So it, there's really these three guys you're looking at. And of course, with Waddle back, you'll see that production there as well. But this is still a good concept by Auburn because it's second down and 10 and they're expecting run. They're expecting the run. They're playing run. They get run. And that's why they get to the stop. Again, it's easy to think it's second and 10. Let's just back everyone off as Florida tends to do. Let's back everybody off. Let's play in a two shell out here, which would look more like this and get something like that, Bama will kill you in that. You occasionally are going to have to play tendencies, but again, I think for the meta for Florida is just to let Alabama run to their heart's content and attempt to limit their big chunk passing plays. Part of the deal when playing Alabama is you're playing a team of extremely talented players, and you can get everything right, but they can still beat you. It's one of the reasons why recruiting is so important. It's why having top 30 and top 100 players is so important. It's why having a guy like future NFL running back, Najee Harris, is so important. This is excellent defense by Auburn. Take a look. We're here. This is a one-yard gain. We're in good shape. This is good defense. It's a good play call. They're ready for this on defense. Everything is your way. Then you miss a tackle, and it turns into a 20-yard gain. Florida can't miss tackles. Well, Florida misses a lot of tackles. You're right about that. That's a problem. Alabama is going to put a lot of pressure on you even when you get the right play call in. They're still going to put a lot of pressure on you because they have guys who can break tackles, and if they break one, they make you pay. We talked a lot on the LSU breakdown about Florida's lack of play action, uh, not using enough of it despite a team that was, that was seemingly bent on stopping all of Florida's passing game. We're going, to see you, we're going to show you the effects, especially when your team is running the ball well of play action here, but we're going to run a very simple one-man route, and all we're trying to do is make sure this linebacker comes up with this play fake, and if we can do that, again, if we can do that, we win. There it is. Look, this is a one-man route. That's all this is. Now, you will rarely see Florida do this. Alabama, again, makes things very easy for Mac Jones. 
There's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in that. They're not cheating. Uh, by cheating, I mean they're not like doing it because Mac couldn't handle more. It's because if you can score touchdowns like this, you should. Again, if you're looking at a risk reward balance in football, if you look at your expected value, you're trying to get as many yards, as many points you can with the least amount of risk possible. And if you can if you can put one guy out there and max protect, do it. Nothing wrong with this. This is good sound football on first and goal, a likely running down. There it is. By just getting him to step up that step or two and not going back, there's the window you need. Very easy touchdown. And again, there is Mechie. So if it's me, what am I doing? Run to your heart's content. I like this idea here of playing a cover zero where there's no safety, but I'm going to get close to the line of scrimmage. I'm going to attempt to disrupt this route, and I'm going to bracket here, and I'm going to say, listen, I'm going to defend the run with all these guys. Right? That's the play. You got to take chances here. You got to take chances because otherwise you're going to get burned too easily by Alabama. Second down and one. Let's play the passive versus aggressive game. I prefer aggressive. Florida prefers passive. Okay, let's take a look at what's happening here. This is is Mechie. He is their slot receiver. He's not a running back. He's going to motion into the backfield, and Auburn's counter is to have their nickel drop off. Why? There is no good reason why. They should not do this. This should not be happening. This is silly. Now, why is it happening? Because they're rotating their safety down to cover the motion in case he comes all the way across the field. Okay, well, that makes sense. In fact, I like doing that, but this is college football. So what happens here? Well, the safety appropriately does his job. Okay, wait a minute. That's not on my side of the field. I'm going to go back here and play free safety. Check. Here we lose discipline. You need to get yourself back into a position where you can make a play. Let's rewind this. Okay, so originally, originally it's second and one, and you feel like a five-yard cushion is good. Here comes the motion. Now, now you have a 10-yard gap between you and a very explosive player. You are playing very passive. As soon as he sees Mechie come back out this way, he needs to be coming down aggressively to play on this route to make sure he can stop the inevitable, which is this. Now imagine instead of him being here, he's here. We're making a play. You're going to see Alabama do this to Auburn on the opposite side of the ball, and they will show you how you play these kind of screens. But Florida is prone to doing the same stuff. And look for Alabama to attempt to get them with just a very simple motion. Let's see if they're going to blow this. We'll motion this way. Safety comes down, which again is proper. It's better than having him chase all the way across. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, that's proper, except you still have to do your job and get yourself back into a threatening position, not eight, nine yards away from a very threatening receiver. So playing Bama, I'm going to let him run all over me. That's my game plan. But regardless, you can't miss tackles if you get things right. Auburn is expecting run here. They're actually ready for this. They're in good position. And we miss a tackle. And if you miss a tackle, it's 15 to 20 yards. Take a look here. We get a bad fill, right? Here we go. We're in good shape. We got this gap covered and we have this gap covered. We just need to do our job. We don't do our job. We whiff. Big play against us. Again, Bama's a tough tough cover for all of these reasons they can beat you in every part of the field deep intermediate short behind line of scrimmage with the running game with the running back out of the backfield there's not a single facet they can't do well and of course they are humans they have weaknesses as you're seeing here on film uh, but very few teams in college football can consistently match um, you know their strength on strength or put them on enough pressure to make those weaknesses be exposed and this is one of the reasons why superior players superior athletes generate easier plays and bigger gains than most other teams are capable of getting. Auburn, again, rolling the dice here. This is not what I recommend Florida does at all. I like this, except I don't like what I see here. Is they're going to play cover one. Now, if you're playing a really good team and you're going to play a single high safety in cover one, that safety is effectively off the field. You might as well just take them off over here and sit them on the bench. Why? Because good teams are going to run goes that look like this and goes that look like this with a hitch route here. Your free safety can't get to this one or this one. So they're effectively just sitting here watching the game, right? You can't do anything about this. This is what good teams do all the time. That's why you have to be careful with how you're playing cover one. This is why I would rather see a bracket coverage if you're going to do something like this, where at least you say, hey, you know what? Forget it. We're taking away Smith 
And you can have this one-on-one -on -one matchup with Mechie. Again, I think you double both of them by bringing someone else here and let them run. I'm going to keep saying that because I think that's wise. Uh, regardless, if we're not going to do that with Florida's undermanned defense, you don't want to do this. Why? Because this matchup is, again, not a single matchup a Florida defender is going to win, at least not consistently. And here you go. Let's watch it play out. He's gone. You're not going to stay with him. No one's going to stay with him. But you can grab him and pick up a pass interference call. So they do save a touchdown there. That's just way too easy, far too simple, and Bama will take that all day long. Now, Florida, of course, rarely plays such an aggressive defense, but I show it to you to say, in general, as a philosophy against teams like this, if you're playing a single high of that nature, you're really playing a man down. Just not a beneficial way to cover offenses that have athletes like Bama does. Second and six for Alabama as they're driving again. This score is 14-3. So if you're a Florida fan, you're thinking, hey, Auburn's deep offense is not very good. That's true. They're not. And Alabama's only scored 14 here late in the second quarter, which is true. They haven't, which is why I'm showing you this film study is Auburn's defense did a pretty decent job against Alabama. Uh, not great, but certainly decent. Decent enough to where Florida would definitely take this score at this point in time. That would mean they're in a football game for sure, right? So... As we're looking at this, let's look at what Bama does here. I mentioned on the podcast that they're very good at using simple concepts and their playmakers to open up space for others. Great example of it here. Here we're going to take Devontae Smith. And again, we're going to see some curious defense by Auburn. We're going to rotate up high. We're going to create a huge amount of space between us. Uh, they could run this screen, but Bama's going for more because why not? Let's pump this here. Let's get him out of the way here. Let's take a guy no one's been looking at here, right? Let's take him and run him over here. Why? Well, because this is Mechie. We're going to play on him. Here's our free safety. We're going to bracket him because we don't want him to catch the ball. That's entirely good reasoning. And this, with my own defensive philosophy, is going to leave Florida having to play any other receiver one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to have to happen. Tight ends, H-backs, et cetera. You got to do it. It happens here for Auburn, and they're going to lose this battle. Very, very simple route. Not even a move made. We're just going to race to this part of the field. We do get pressure here that almost gets home. Nice job by Mac Jones stepping up in the pocket, hits his target. Now what happens here, this is Mac Jones's primary read the entire way. This play is absolutely a pump fake here and a throw here. He's very, very accurate. So we've been talking about what Mac Jones doesn't see when he does see it, when he's on the right read, when he has a chance to deliver the ball. He is a very accurate deep thrower. He's very, very solid at this. That's not his best ball, but that shows you that even with a margin for error, he's going to put a catchable ball out there. He's going to make teams pay. Alabama can get a variety of guys wide open. Florida will have to live with this kind of stuff. They'll have to live with that. They're going to have to live with that because you can't cover everyone. But you'd much rather have this happen to you four or five times a game than this or this because those are the obvious choices. Uh, so look for Alabama, of course, to not only just utilize their two or three main guys, but to scheme up ways to get lots of grass to go to and then easy reads, really just a single read, touchdown pass. Alabama, as good as they are, is not perfect. And in fact, some teams will just run because they want to run. It's in their character. Let's take a look at this here. We're going to get a wide receiver motion, and we're going to see that Auburn is going to continue to play this very passively, right? We're very passive here, uh, but this is just window dressing because Alabama wants to run. Now, they're taking note that they're continually playing this very passively. He's not somewhere in here. He's a good six yards off the line of scrimmage. Auburn, though, did a nice job all game long of stopping Bama's run for the most part. Take a look at that. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go there. Too many yards out of that play, but initially... Penetration was stopped. Florida's defensive line could, could do decently well against Alabama, especially if they can get decent gap control from the linebackers, which has been something that's been plaguing Florida all year long. Uh, but in general, again, if Bama wants to run, I say let them run. Let them run. You got to live with something. They can, they can be stopped, especially if you're expecting run. This is not a Bama team of old that is an absolute juggernaut at running the football. They are excellent at running the football, don't get me wrong, but they are not a team that's just going to line up and run for six or seven yards per carry. If you are in a good play against them, you can stop them from running effectively. So as we mentioned, Florida should absolutely look to exploitatively load up against the run and hope they guess correctly for as to when that's going to be. It's third and seven for Alabama. It's important to look at what teams want to do on third down to get a feel for what it is that they like to do, especially for their quarterback. We're going to have a motion man come back into the backfield. Auburn's going to follow. 
it tells Alabama they're in man, in which case Mac Jones is going to take a single read chance here with John Mechie. There it is. Up the sideline. It's a perfect ball. Again, Mac Jones will throw a really accurate ball. And on this particular play, it's going to be an incompletion. Now, I show you this to say that, like I've been saying all along, Alabama likes to use very simple concepts, which is good and wise, to create what they want. They know it's man. They like to match up pre-snap, safe, comfortable throw. Not a lot of risk can happen there. Let's take a shot with our athlete versus theirs rather than mess around on a third and long with all that could be happening in this part of the field. If you start talking about how to scheme these things up as a defensive coordinator, if we know that Alabama likes to do these things, then we can have our player follow in here and make it look like we're playing man. But then on the snap, we actually play zone. We can send our safety over here to rob this. Uh, we could drop him in the rob window. We could do a lot of different things to make this happen. Point here is you can use a team's tendencies to guess what may happen and take some chances when you're the underdog. That would be a very wise thing to do. And we know on film that Alabama likes to basically script up some simple stuff for Mac Jones, give him high percentage first read plays. And if he sees something where he doesn't like his first read, oftentimes he won't make a full field read. He may just go to his check down or he may just tuck it, which in third and seven may be enough to get your defense off the field. So again, it's very important against Alabama and Mac Jones to give them a pre-snap read that is not the same as the post-snap read. Otherwise, they're very good at diagnosing, okay, you're going to be in this post-snap, you'll run this play, and they will hit that with a high degree of success. Third and six is now third quarter here, 13.55, still 21-3, still a football game. Auburn's defense still performing well, another third down situation. Alabama likes to run a lot of mesh routes. We've talked about mesh routes before in the podcast and on these breakdowns. They like to run mesh routes. You can run these from a variety of combinations. We can run it here and here or here and here, whatever the case may be. They like to run these short drags underneath. They're easy throws, especially if they think teams are playing man-to-man. -man. We mentioned before that if you can muddy the pre-snap look for Mac Jones and you can couple that with some pressure, you can get to him. Now, hopefully Florida will not send some dreaded corner blitzes. We don't like those. We don't want those. Those don't work, even against a team like Alabama that often will play action and then back up and set to the window where a corner blitz could be effective. Their offensive line is too adept at picking it up. It's too far away. It's just not worth the risk. What is a good blitz, however, are blitzes in this area. And you're going to see here that Auburn is going to send pressure with six. They're sending pressure with six. Now, they're not going to get home, but they are going to make this uncomfortable for Mac. Again, he doesn't need to leave the pocket right now. He's actually okay. He should stand in the pocket and he should deliver this ball right here or even right here if he wants to. He doesn't. He's going to escape early. That's going to make this throw pretty much impossible and he yet almost makes it. Really should have been caught and it's not. Now again, I show you this play to say expect a lot of these mesh routes. Alabama runs them all the time with verticals over top. Auburn there again, he's pretty beat right here. Take a look at the angle he has to take. Pretty beat, ball's not gonna go there. Nice recovery play there. Florida is going to need to do a good job against these mesh routes if they wanna be successful against Alabama in any regard. We talked about how Auburn was guessing pretty well against Alabama, especially against the run game, and sometimes you'll guess wrong. And when you guess wrong, Bama will make you pay. Take a look here, this is a pass all the way. They're expecting pass, they're bailing out. Right now it looks like cover four. Don't worry about that. Just know that they're expecting a pass and they're not gonna get one. Because they don't get one, Bama makes you pay for 15 yards. Now again, if you're Florida, I think Florida's gotta live with some of these runs sometimes because the alternative is just worse. Uh, but either way, Bama will punish you with very easy plays if you guess wrong, they guess wrong. You can't always guess right, that's part of football. That's okay. Again, breaking down film, it's hindsight's 20-20. I can look at all these plays and say, well, this is what happened. This is what you should have done. Now, that's not real life, right? In real life from this set, Alabama could run anything. They could run anything they wanted to. They've got an eligible tight end. They've got three receivers and they got a running back. They could attack us any way they want. It's not very easy to know what's going to happen. And on second down and one, it's a great down to take a shot. So there's nothing wrong with being conservative here from Auburn, by the way. We don't often talk about this on these film breakdowns because we like to break down what's perfection. Uh, but keep in mind, in the real game of football, on second down and one, it might be wise just to say, look, I don't want to get beat deep here. I'm going to give him a first down. 
I don't want to have them score a touchdown. I'll live to fight for another set of downs. And sometimes in football, that game theory, that leveling that occurs, you're going to have to do this. And if he gets wrong, in this case here you did, you're just going to get punished. But now at least it's first and 10 still on Alabama's side of the field rather than a 40 or 50 yard gain if you're selling out to stop the run on second and one. So all a matter of preference and mindset. You can't stop everything a team does. Bama builds on the progression of their play calling throughout each and every game better than almost anyone else in the country does. Each game is its own canvas. They start blank. They see what you're doing. They fill you out and they begin to progress upon that. So we know that Auburn has been playing rather passive against the screen plays. Take a look here at the bottom of your screen. This is much more aggressive. Now we're going to play aggressive posture. I'm going to chuck the top of this bunch, which is nice. We're still going to play pretty passive here. Again, look at our spacing. We're still playing pretty passive here in the backfield. But we're going to sell this as a screen. Bama does this frequently. They do it almost every single game. And they hit pay dirt a lot doing this. Expect to see something similar against Florida on Saturday. It is a staple of their playbook. This is an absolutely great throw by Mac Jones. Check out his platform. He's facing here. He's going to get pressure. He's going to stand still, throw against his body, and throw an absolutely great pass given where he's standing in the pocket. Really, really great job by him. Again, this is his read. I'm not knocking him. You should never knock quarterbacks for a first read. Part of good quarterbacking is having a good first read in the first place and hitting it, right? So you're not going to knock a guy for that. This is a phenomenal throw to his first read. The timing is perfect. We're thinking screen. He's thinking I'm blocking. Smith is not going to run a route, and there he goes. He does run a route, and again, this is why I'm bracket covering him. Now my safety is already here because I'm not going to have a single high free safety 30 yards away. I've got to take this guy away. Why? Because I don't want him to do this. I don't want a slant route to turn into a touchdown. I'm not cool with that. I don't want that. I wouldn't do this. This is the risk you take when you're not going to have a bracket on this kind of guy. I think he's worthy of a bracket. You just give him the respect and you bracket him. Beat me with someone else. Now you can have eight yards. I'm going to tackle you right here as opposed to a touchdown. Either way, look for Alabama to feature some sort of fake screen or fake play uh, that involves something they've built upon by using east-west plays early in the game. Again, it's one of the reasons why being consistently aggressive against east-west plays makes those fakes far less effective later on in the game. Said it once. I've said it twice. I've said it probably 20 times. Here's number 21. If you play passive against these bunt sets, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. Passive, passive. Three guys going out. Screener here. This is too passive, and you're going to pay the price. This is the same exact play that Alabama ran earlier in the game, and they ran it for 15 or 20 yards, and there's 11 more. Florida cannot allow, they just cannot allow Alabama to get the ball to Devontae Smith behind the line of scrimmage with this much space and a free blocker. You can't do it. Again, you want to solve this problem. You put a guy in the line. You get a chuck here. You bracket him with two. And you say, beat me with somebody else. Or beat me with a running game. Fine. You can have that. Let's shorten the game. Let's give each team fewer possessions. Let's hope for some quirkiness. But you can't do this. All right, so you're getting my vibe. Let's let them run. That's great. Let's load up against the pass. Let's stop the run. Well, here's the problem with that process too, right? Alabama can do everything. They do all facets of the game well. No, I don't like this style against Bama. I'm going to show you this right now. This, of course, is going to be a touchdown. Right there goes Najee Harris. That's easy. No one touches him. Hmm, not a lot of resistance there. Again, hard to stop this stuff, but I hate the way Auburn's playing defense on this play entire. Let's look at it. Passive. Again, we just got beat for 11 yards of the screen. What are we doing? We're playing super passive again. So I don't like that. That's not good. Let's hope Florida does not do that. Well, they will. We know that. So let's instead go in here and look at what's happening here. Well, Auburn is going to choose to bring some edge pressure, but that's really not very important against a power running team like Alabama. You would much rather have him running down the line of scrimmage and then turning it upfield than busting you for a power run. Again, Bama's going to be far more dangerous with the inside handoffs. You need to stop that. Rather than have him starting on the edge, I just keep him right here in your traditional 4-3 set and make sure your gap integrity is solid. You just wasted him. Mac Jones is not going to be running zone reads. You wasted him off the edge, and instead of him making a tackle right here, you've now given them a touchdown. 
a touchdown, right? So it's all about scheming your opponent. Can they run off tackle? Can they run sweeps to the outside? Of course they can. Does Nick Saban love to run up the middle for touchdowns? Yes, he does. So let's overplay that and give up this one instead. Auburn here does not do it, and they pay the ultimate price. All right, it's 35-6. to six. The game now is, is really well out of hand. This is over. Alabama's got it. But it's not going to stop Auburn from still giving them free yards. And again, Auburn's played okay on defense in some regards, but still too passive. We're going to keep showing this. Here we are again. Take a look at that. That's a bunch. How should we defend this? Not the way Auburn is doing it. You can't defend this this passively. This is going to be susceptible to look at this. All right, well, it's not going to be Smith. Instead, it'll be Mechie, who's the other one that's going to get all the targets. And it's third and six. It's third and six. That's 10 free yards. 10 free yards. Again, this is a first read. Super simple play. There you go. Too passive, too easy. You're not muddling up the pre-snap window. You're not muddling up the post-snap window, and you're just not making Alabama earn it. Again, I'd expect Florida to do a lot of this on Saturday. In fact, it would be shocking if they didn't give these up because they've given them up all year long. So we've made it all the way to the fourth quarter, and I've still yet to show you a traditional screenplay, which is Alabama of old and still Alabama of today. They don't do it quite as often. They'll do it in a different fashion. We're not going to be under center, but here it is. Najee, who stays in the block a lot, is going to sneak himself out right here for a little screen. I want you to notice the down and distance. It's third down and eight. Again, this is why Alabama's offense is so hard to stop. They will run a plethora of plays at you. They don't just have a simple tendency. They're always threatening both the run and the pass. Again, let's look at this play. They're threatening both the run and the pass on third and eight. There's still a running back in here. They're not in an empty set. They're not letting you know what's going to happen. You have to respect all of them. Then we're going to sneak out of here. We've got a cadre of blockers. And we're going to pick up the first down. Again, easy throws, easy conversions. They're not making it super hard on themselves. And again, Mac Jones simply does not have to shoulder the burden that Kyle Trask does, not even in the same hemisphere. Good for Mac Jones. I'm sure Kyle Trask wishes he could have a much lighter burden as well. But Bama's offense, much more well-rounded, uh, much more capable of attacking in a variety of facets, and that is entirely to their benefit. First and 10 for Bama. We're going to see some more aggressive defense here out of Auburn than we have been seeing. Let's press up here. Let's press in here. And let's get really physical. Here we go. Physical jam. Hands on contact here. I don't love this, by the way. This is the wrong way. This should be a crossbody, as we've talked about so many times before. Let's get your left arm there, not your right arm. Your left arm makes you really, really, your right arm makes you really susceptible to a million different moves. And it turns you the wrong way. It throws your body off on your full man turn. But we're not coaching Auburn right now, so we'll let that be. On the other hand, up here, we're going to see a lot of good stuff. Physical contact here, more physical contact here. Now we're going to get somewhere. Mechie now has gone nowhere. Now he's running into the rub route of the tight end, and now there's nowhere to go. And you can see, again, Mac Jones immediately looks here. He doesn't like what he sees. His first read's not there. He's just going to reset, and really he throws this ball away. So this is the benefit of playing Alabama. It's, it's still a classic Alabama. This is very wise. Don't turn the ball over if you don't like what's their offense. And again, that's smart. That's smart. But that also helps you as a defense. If you can just get the initial play correct, you don't have to be too worried about what happens in an ad lib fashion or on read two or read three. And this aggressive play of Auburn helps to pay off here against Alabama's passing game. Now, sometimes on film, we'll see a really bad play call get rewarded, but it doesn't mean that it was wise. That's what happens here. So we're going to send a double edge pressure, and then we're going to leave. Here he is. We've seen this once. We've seen it twice. We've seen it, I don't know, five times, six times, Devontae Smith. And this looks pretty darn good to me. It's a safety off the screen. I don't know. You tell me how many yards this is going to be on second and 10. Seems like a free first down, except you do have to execute. And in this case, we do not execute. We whiff what should have been an easy block, and a hero play is made by Auburn. But make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. If he does his job here, and this block is on, you tell me what happens. That's what happens. So this is a great play call. This is what you want to see on film when you're breaking a team down. If you're a Bama fan and you're watching this, you're thinking, this is what you want to see from your team. You'd rather have an accidental bad execution but a great play call than a bunch of play calls where you have guys that have half a yard or a yard open to hit. 
Uh, this is a high percentage play. It's a really easy throw to your best player. And if a team is going to let you get your best player in space with the ball, you take it every single time. Again, nice hero play here, right? If we're watching film, we're saying, hey, great job. You saved us from a really bad play call. Thank you. It's third and 13 now. I tend to love cover zero aggression, not against Alabama. To run cover zero and to run aggressive plays like that, you need to be the superior team. And if you're going to do it, you need to be able to play generally a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage than this. If you're going to give this much cushion against superior athletes in cover zero, good luck covering a million different routes that can run on you. And again, cover zero means there's no safety back here. This is all you see. They're playing very aggressive. It's third and 13 against a quarterback who tends to only make one read and then play it safe. Cover zero is not as good especially when you're as accurate as Mac Jones is. This is actually playing into his hand. This is over aggression. It's 35-6. I get what's happening here. You're frustrated. You want us in the heat. You've had enough, right? But this, again, I just don't think makes a lot of sense. So what we have here is manned here, man here, man here, man here. And what you're going to see is Mac Jones has got Devontae Smith and Mechie. Now, again, they alternate, right? You think, man, I'm taking Devontae Smith on any route I want to run. But why not spread the wealth around? These are going to be two decoy routes here. They know it's cover zero, and we're just going to run a simple go or a fade route here for a touchdown. And again, all he's going to do is take this snap. He's not looking at anyone else other than Mechie. Mechie wins. Easy touchdown. This is a great pass. That's an absolutely great ball. Great ball. He knows the pressure's coming. Puts it right where it needs to be. Really nice job by Mac Jones. Again, Bama does a really good job of earning themselves high percentage looks. Even on plays like these, Florida should not play into their hands by giving them comfortable pre-snap reads. I'm going to keep saying that because that's so important in football. It's especially important when you're the underdog. It's extremely important when you're playing a quarterback like Mac Jones who thrives off having a comfortable pre-snap read and then making an accurate pass and does not thrive as much as having to make read two or read three in the system. All right, that will conclude our look at Alabama's offense. Between the four games now that we've seen Bama's offense on film, you should have all you would need to know about them. And of course, we'll learn even more about them against Florida in the SEC championship game. They're solid. They're sound. They can attack you any way possible. As always, number one rule of defense is to attempt to stop what the other team wants to do most. And hopefully you've seen from these studies that it is number six and number eight. Obviously, with Waddle's return, that makes things even more complicated for Florida. And then number 22 with Najee Harris. 6'8", 22, Waddle, take your pick. Decide how you want to defend them. It is not going to be an easy task. Very sound, very solid, excellent. Again, excellent use of leveling in game theory. If you want to do this, then we'll do this. We'll just stay one step ahead of you, get a good confirmation pre-snap, and hit you. Don't take any extra risks that are not necessary. Keep things in front of you. Keep it easy. Get the ball to your playmakers. Very, very sound offense. And given Florida's extremely unsound defense, expect this to be a nightmarish matchup for Florida. Now let's take a look at Alabama's defense. I'm not going to use the old Miss film because that was a lifetime ago. Alabama defense-wise, they've come a long way since then. I view that game more as a fluke than what is reality, especially now. This unit is very sound. Of course, you can move the ball on them. They can still blow some things, which we'll show you. But in general, very solid unit, especially schematically. The ideas behind how they defend, I love them. They're really solid. But because they're college athletes and they can make mistakes, of course, you can still generate plays against them. Uh, let's take a look at how they're guarding Auburn. Auburn is not a good comparison to Florida's offense at all. But it doesn't really matter because Auburn runs a variety of formations and so much of good football is just defending the formation correctly. And that's what you're going to see in this breakdown. Auburn loves to throw a bunch of crazy pre-snap formations all over the place, as you see here. Take a look at the shift. You're only seeing half of it. There was a lot more to it if you look at the entire play clock. Bama really, really good at communicating on the back end to make sure that everyone knows their role and getting lined up correctly. What's going to be big in this game for Florida, of course, is the role of a conflict defender. Now, playing Florida, we've seen teams do a really, really good job of using these conflict defenders to read, run, and pass. Of course, their job is to play both the pass and the run. They've had a very good knack for when Florida's running, for when Florida's passing. It's one reason why we feel like Florida needs to use a lot more play action to hold these conflict defenders up 
rather than just lining up and running routes, which is going to make things impossible against a team like Alabama. On this second and eight, you're going to see as a conflict defender, he's responsible for this route and the run play. He's going to read run first, especially because you're playing Auburn, and he's going to be rewarded. He's in perfect position, and he makes the tackle. Again, good, sound discipline, good, sound defense from a conflict defender. Expect Alabama, as we said on the podcast, to mix what we've seen some from both Tennessee and LSU, as well as Kentucky, and continuing to further the meta strategy against Florida. Uh, Dan Mullen and the offensive staff needs to come up with some different ideas, some different wrinkles that will allow them to run the ball better, to create bigger windows for Trask to throw to, and not allow teams to load up plus two in the pass every single play, which makes it so, so difficult to pass no matter who you are, no matter how good Kyle Trask is. You cannot consistently complete yards without a lot of risk against a defense like Alabama's. Alabama tends to like to play zone on first and second down and much more man on third down. Of course, they'll mix that up, but that's their tendency. And here early on on third down and four, they're going to bring pressure with five. And we're going to play man behind it. Take a look at what they do. Here we go. We're locked up. We're manning. We're not switching. We're not pattern matching. We're manning up here. A couple of good things to look at with how Bama does this. First of all, notice, although they're not playing press man here, notice the depth. We got a bunch set here. We got three, not a bunch, but trips. And notice this. This is something you're going to like to see. It's a triangle to triangle. This is important. We talk a lot about how Florida tends to back this person up, and you see kind of this flat, straight line. You want to have this triangle. This allows you to cover the most common routes being run out of this better. And most importantly, it gives you layers. It gives you layers to your man defense, which will allow you not to get picked. So for now, focus on the routes coming from here. These are pick routes. If you're down in low and man press, this might mess you up. Take a look because it's third and four. We're going to back off. They're going to let this traffic clear. Now the defender over your head here is going to come and take the route that's coming his way. There it is. And now we're going to pick this one up. It's a really clean exchange. It's a good one. And it's a nice pattern match. Now Bo Nix does have an easy slant throw here. He does not hit. Take a look there. That's there. Bama, of course, as games go on, will come down more and more on these. We've seen that before, but right here he does have this if he wants it. But again, Bama very, very sound with their pre-snap alignment and their gaps, understanding what the sticks are, what the situation is, what the most common routes are, and doing their best not to get picked. Now, of course, you can still take advantage of teams that are going to play Mandelbrot in the field. You've got to run these picks further away which Auburn's not doing here. On this side of the field, take a look down here. We're going to get straight man. Again, good leveling concept. See how this happens here? We're on the ball here, so we're going to give enough space so that when this route inevitably tries to pick him, he can come over the top, which he does. He still gets picked. Again, this is not clean. Still gets picked. Bo Nix is looking here. He could have this for a first down as well. So why am I showing you this? Florida has at times criminally not done enough of this. Now we have done this and it tends to pay off very well, but oftentimes you'll see Florida just run three independent routes out of this. And while that can work against a team like Alabama, you are far better off attempting to take advantage of their own tendencies and attempting to generate open receivers by using help. Use your help here. Find ways to team each other with your route combinations. Don't just make your players beat Alabama one-on-one -on -one, or in the case of Florida on third and four, potentially facing what we faced against LSU, which is four on three here and three on two down here. Typically, Alabama likes to have their safety come down on motions. Florida, of course, tends to motion Tony a lot, will motion all sorts of other players. Florida knows this and can attempt to take advantage of the matchups they can create this way. It will be interesting to see how Alabama wants to handle Tony motioning, I imagine they're going to wind up bracketing him, which is oftentimes what you would see here, is you might have your strong safety come in here and then use help from a safety coming down, which we saw this happen frequently against LSU. Other teams have been doing this against Tony as well. Either way, this is the standard way for Bama to handle these. This is, I think, the best way to handle this, and you're going to see how they go into this here. There it is. Auburn then is going to give them really a little window dressing, and they're going to send him back out this side. Take a look, edge defender, unblocked, knows this, holds the line, make sure we can tackle both this play and Bo Nix coming out. So check there, excellent fundamentals, good work. Now trust your team to do their job for you over there, which is exactly what happens. 
Great defense along the line. Again, Bama very, very sound at doing all the little things well. Second and seven for Auburn. Now, Alabama has a good, good feel with years and years of Nick Saban on when to call certain coverages. You're going to see them go to a cover two here, and cover two is perfect against things that Auburn likes to do, especially plays that involve passes to the flat. Alabama and Nick Saban teams are always very, very aggressive against east-west passes. It's one of the most important things to do against modern spread offenses. And you can see this here. They're ready for both. Take a look at what's happening. Watch this. He's His responsibility is the flats and anything back here. That's his job. He's going to let any route go over his head. That is not his job in this zone coverage. He sees it. He's attacking it. And that's a loss of five yards. Again, super easy. We saw how Auburn was defending this. We saw the difference. Take a look here, how Alabama defends it. Now, can you get something off this? You sure can. And this is where it helps to have quarterbacks who make reads. This is one reason why Kyle Trask, in my opinion on film, is generally so elevated is he is a guy who Florida will also trust to not just throw this pass blindly, but to actually take a look and read this defender. And again, if you want to get to the next level, here's what happens. We're going to let him to be unblocked. It's part of the play. And you're going to go, okay, we're going to read this. I'm going to read the defender here. That's all we're doing. We're reading him. If he's flat-footed, I know he's got me taken out here. Now I'm going to take my hitch route. Bingo. There. Okay, we're going to two-on-one him. That's the play. Of course, what makes this hard and what Bama knows about this is, if you're going to wind up not blocking here, he will be in your throw window. And naturally, that is helping to make that throw much harder. So again, really sound lineup by Alabama, sound plays, sound techniques, although you're watching this at home thinking, wow, look at all the space over here. There's tons of it. There certainly is some, but this throw is a little bit harder than you think it is. Driving it down right over an oncoming player, it can be batted down. A plethora of things can happen, but regardless, for something for, something for Florida to look at is if we are going to wind up sending flat receivers here and Alabama does early on want to wind up playing a cover two concept like this, you can in fact hit a slant or a route in the flat by two on wanting that. So pay attention to that for Saturday. Regardless, I like how Alabama plays these east-west plays. It's an excellent way to kill momentum and tell teams that you are not going to get the easy throw. If you want to beat us, you've got to play something more complicated than a throw behind the line of scrimmage. So the good news is, despite how good Bama's defense is and how well they communicate, they are still not perfect. So here we have a stack set. Whoops, sorry about that. Here we have a stack set. Now we're going to get a motion. We're going to drop down here. We're going to motion across with this, and we're going to set against this bunch. Take a look. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? Just look at that picture. Every time I see it, it makes me so happy. Here's our triangle tick and bat this triangle. It's a game of geometry, but it's a beautiful game and it's really important. It's one of the reasons why Bama is so successful against these sets, except even Bama can get the communication wrong. You got to get your communication right with how you're going to handle this and they don't get it right at all. We're going to play here with him and we're also going to play here with him, which is going to leave him unguarded. Just a simple mistake. If they don't make this mistake, this is definitely not a conversion, but they do. Here he goes. He's running with him. He's running with him. He recognizes, uh-oh, We've blown this. I'm going to try to come help before he gets the first down, but I'm way too far away and I just don't get there. So even as a D coordinator, as good as, as Saban and staff are, players are still going to make mistakes. And again, when you're watching film, you're going to be okay. You go into the film and say, look, we got to get this right. If you're going to see this bunch set, we got to make sure we get our rules right. Let's not mess this up again. What are our rules? How do we want to handle this? What's our pattern match? How are we going to play man? Do we want to jam this here? Uh, are we taking, you know, is he taking the first out receiver? He's taking the first in receiver, which is pretty typical. You can have different rules than that. But regardless, teams can still blow rules. They blow one here. But if you are an opposing offense, when you're looking at film like this, pre-snap, you're thinking, hmm, this is not great. I don't love this lineup. I don't have an obvious place to go. I'm basically going to take this snap and just look and hope that something goes right. That slows the process down. It slows your team down. And again, it generally leads to less conversions along the game. Basically, Bama makes it difficult for teams to move the ball against them because they communicate well, they shift well, they get properly lined up correctly, and they don't give you clean pre-snap windows. How Alabama snaps or moves, sorry, pre-snap is absolutely beautiful. Take a look at this here. There's no other way to describe it. This is high-level communication. So we're going to motion across here. Now we're going to reset. 
to the high side, we're gonna bring our safety down here to play aggressively down low. Now the motion man comes back across here. We're gonna come back down aggressively into that space. Basically all of your tomfoolery is not fooling me. The unblock edge defender is gonna hold the edge to make sure he can account for this motion man here. And now take a look one more time here. Our conflict defender who dropped down as a safety is gonna wait. He's playing run and pass. He now sees a handoff. He's gonna drop down, hold the edge here. He's effectively held the edge there. Everything looks good. Now we're gonna stay on the outside. Take a look at that. He stays on the outside. One more time, stay on the outside, engage that block, make a tackle. That is absolutely textbook perfect defense. You've got to imagine that when Saban and the defensive staff put this on the film room on Monday after the game, they absolutely loved it. Check, check, check. All the shifts are perfect. Everything is perfect. Super check here by staying to the outside and not trying to make a hero tackle Let the play come to you. Excellent, excellent football. Now, this is a play where the TV camera really robs you of how good this is. You're not going to be able to see this, but at this point in time right now, Alabama has their corner on the 41-yard line. So he's in the 29. The corner is off your screen on the 41-yard line, okay? It's second and 12. Now, we often talk about Florida playing too soft, but the reality is if you're going to play off, you need to be coming downhill like this. Big, strong tackle, good hit. That's a four-yard gain on second and 12, and now it's third and eight. Florida oftentimes will start off and stay off. We've talked about it. It's inexplicable. It makes no sense. But you can bet that Alabama is not going to do that. So Florida is making a pre-snap read. I've got a lot of grass over here, which is true. I do. He's going to backpedal upon the start, perhaps. Maybe he's just going to bail. It's not true. Bama's going to sit off, as you should. So let's, let's redraw this here. Here's the receiver. Here is Bama's running back. He's not going to backpedal. He's going to wait. So as soon as this ball is snapped, imagine it's happening right now. He's just holding. He's holding. And he waits to see that. As soon as this happens and he begins to make a move to the out, he then comes downhill. That is how you play off. Bingo. Make the tackle. Solid technique. Great play. Third and six from Bama. We've said Bama likes to play man on third down. and They like to bring pressure. Take a look here. We're going to follow with the motion. Looks like man defense to me. Notice what happens. Look at this. I'm just going to keep saying this is so pretty. Triangle and triangle. I love it. It's amazing to me how few of teams in college football play this kind of defense. It is without a doubt the best way to defend these triangle bunch sets, yet so few teams seem to do it. I really don't have a good answer for you as to why. It is definitely the meta strategy. Uh, this is how it should be done. They're going to level themselves correctly, and they're going to add a little wrinkle in here. Now, keep in mind that he was the one who motioned over with him, but watch what happens post-snap. We're going to change this up a little bit. We are going to switch our roles. That's a nice little wrinkle. It's a simple wrinkle, but if you were paying attention and you thought you had either the matchup you liked or you thought you had what you wanted, you might be reading this on this. And Bama says, no, 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 we're going to change that up on you. So a small little wrinkle, but a nice little change. Not going to lead to much here. Either way, it's nice. And then Bo Nix is going to throw a super just sloppy, horrible pass. I mean, take a look at this. No pressure yet in his face. Leans back, chucks one. Nobody's open there. That's a gift. Florida won't be doing things like that. But either way, nice little wrinkle from Bama. And as we said, third down, they like to play man. They like to bring pressure. There is five coming as well. I do expect Bama to mix things up a little bit against Florida, especially if they're able to get a pass rush with just four because Kyle Trask is so good if you give him space. They may look at what LSU did and choose to bail this defender more often than they typically do. Auburn now recognizing that Alabama is getting set too nicely against them is going to try for a very late motion here into this triangle set. Take a look at the play clock. Now, this is something Bama has been susceptible, is you can play tempo on Alabama. Of course, one of the best ways to mess up a team that lines up really well is do things that don't allow them to line up really well. So one thing I would hope Florida does in this game is not to come out of timeouts or TV timeouts or whatever the case may be and be lined up in your formation and stay that way. That's a really bad recipe for Alabama. In fact, if anything, go into a huddle, break out of it, and try to quick snap the ball. You can still do that later in the play clock, just break the huddle later. Uh, regardless, keep an eye on that. You're going to see that Auburn actually does this so late. 
We've got some confusion here. We're not totally set. There's a call, the signal's not made. We do not get that nice triangle we're looking for just yet. We're a little bit off of it, uh, but you'll see they kind of recover into a nice zone regardless. And I want you to watch of how well Alabama plays zone. Immediate drop here, immediate drop here and drop over here, funneling this receiver to the free safety. But take a look at what happens here. This is how you play zone defense. You're looking at the eyes of the quarterback. That's one of the benefits of playing zone. You don't have to watch your man. You're watching with your periphery. He sees that Bo Nix, who's not a good quarterback, is just continually staring at the same part of the field, which is going to allow him to leave to come make a play here. Here he comes into your screen. If it's a better pass, that's probably a pick six. One more time. Better pass, probably a pick six. So Bama, of course, can not only play man, they can also play zone. They're very effective at it, and again, very well taught. Another third and six for Auburn. This play is probably something similar to what Florida is going to see in the game on Saturday. Instead of bringing five on third and six, we're going to drop the edge defender into the slant window or the dig window. Notice the technique here, backpedaling off the line, locating the receivers, making sure he doesn't have anything coming into his zone. Take a look at that, very good. Continually locating, is anybody coming into my zone? We're not staring back here because there's no one back here to look at. One more time, I wanna rewind this. This is something that has plagued Florida, in my opinion, against teams knowing they're going to pass. They're in an empty set. While empty sets can be great, when teams have had tons and tons of film on you and what you like to run out of it and how you're running it, empty sense against good defense can be very difficult. In this situation, again, he knows there's absolutely no running threat. I'm just gonna locate, 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 which is done. Here we've got good exchanges. We're on top of this route here. We've sunk a free safety way deep in case they're gonna take a shot. So Bama's playing safer in this regard early in the game. As the game goes on, they will play more aggressive. It's what they do. And it's important to note that Bama can be beat. We're gonna win on this route here. Take a look at this route right here. We're gonna win, we're gone. This safety bailed way deep. We've got a nice window here. Uh, Bo Nix is not looking. Why is Bo Nix not looking? Because Bama isn't just gonna rush for you without doing something creative. Take a look at this. We're gonna send a really nice stunt to the A-gap right? And really to the opposing a gap. Look at this excellent, well-timed pressure that blows this play up. Bo Nix has to run for it and gets a first down. Of course, Trask is not as fleet of foot as Bo Nix. Alabama will be even more confident running sets like these against Florida. Now, whether or not they're going to be as aggressive as LSU was, where instead of having this, this free safety be up here, he's down here to where they're playing 3v2 and 4v3, we'll find out, but I would expect to see both of these concepts used, both where the free safety goes deep and helps, and also where they come up close and take away tendencies. Again, Florida needs to adjust. It's been something the teams have been continually squeezing them on, and Florida has not had excellent answers yet for how to do that. If I were Florida, I would avoid these five wide situations. Again, I would avoid them almost at all costs. It's not a great matchup for Florida right now. They do much better on any of these third downs to keep a running back back there to at least give the threat, especially to the conflict defender here, that you're going to run or at least hold them to try to create space over their head. So one of the best reasons to have your safeties handle these shifts is you can really stop the east-west plays. Again, and you have to do it aggressively. So notice this one more time. Let's start here. Here we go, motion man, immediate handout. I'm passing this off to you, I'm gonna replace you. Pass off and replace, there it is. Okay, great. It's important to have players that can handle that kind of responsibility. And now I'm not gonna sit here and wait for this. I'm gonna come downhill and do my job aggressively. Here I come, there's a screen pass, evade the block, make a tackle, right? These seem, these seem so easy. When you watch good defenses on film, you look at it and think, man, this is just so simple. Why is Florida not doing this? Why are other teams not doing this? Well, one, it's really hard to coach all 11 guys to get this done well, especially in college. Uh, Nick Saban does it every year, which is why he's so good at what he does. And two, you have to have players that are capable of doing this. A lot of teams just say, hey, I don't trust this guy to be my free safety on this play. I don't want that. I'm just gonna make him chase over here. I'm gonna change it with him here. I'm gonna get a bad matchup. Bama intentionally recruits players, obviously when it's a safety and free safety, they can do both. And although they do give up a little bit there weakness-wise, they trust that most college teams cannot take advantage of matchups like an NFL team would, and they'd much rather stop teams with these little east-west passes than to play suboptimally by using different motion players. 
third down and 10 again for Auburn. It's 14 nothing. And we're in the second quarter, so this is still a football game. This is still a football game at this point in time. And again, sometimes Alabama, they're not perfect. They'll blow this. And you can see they're going to blow another one of these triangle exchanges here where essentially they're just not going to cover. They're not going to cover the in-breaking receiver. And this is a nice play. So do they blow this? Yes. But this is what I'm talking about when I mentioned the podcast, how you have to take advantage of a team's pattern matching rules. Nick Saban's pattern matching rules are largely stationary. Of course, each game they can change them a little bit based on team's tendencies. But what Auburn does here is really, really smart. So notice that the inside receiver is going to purposely screen the low man on the triangle for Alabama. Notice that. And then we're going to send the top here on a slant route. Now what this does is this takes away the defender that Bama was going to use on this inside, and it leaves a stranded defender on the top of your screen here that cannot get to the slant, and that's going to go for 13 yards. So one more time, take a look, right? As we mentioned before, Bama is not always having this happen. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes this defender slides over and takes the first person to come in, but they catch him right here. That's not what Bama wanted to do. Again, Bama was locked up man-to-man -man here, and they're going to catch them in a good play, a little screen, and then that's a nice, easy conversion on third down. So this is why Alabama doesn't always play man right here, because if you do that, then teams will do this and then this. That's why sometimes you're going to have him take the first inside. He might take the first flat and run vertically if somebody runs vertical, and then he'll take the first out. Again, there's different rules uh, for different situations, different times. You can create them as you wish. Uh, but Auburn takes advantage of one here. And again, for Florida, it's something they will need to do. They need to design plays to attack how Alabama likes to play against certain formations and sets. In order to be a really good defense, you have to have good safety play. Now, Alabama likes to start a lot of their pre-snap formations in two, two high or two shell. But in reality, they actually rarely play too high. They're almost always going to have one of these safeties coming down. They primarily do run cover three. They will run cover four, where, of course, they'd both stay up, and they'll run a lot of cover one. But it's second down and five, and this is, again, how you play safety, especially how you play strong safety. The run comes to your side. You're waiting. Notice not backpedaling. We're waiting. It also tells you that Bama's expecting on second and five, potentially a run or a short pass play here. We're going to wait for this. There it is. And now we are going to come downhill aggressively and make this tackle. This is one-on-one. -on -one. There's no help anywhere else. It's one-on-one, -on -one. mono a mono in the flat, and we're going to make a tackle. That's how you do it. You want to see what a good defense looks like in college football? That's what it looks like. Come downhill aggressively, make a tackle, do your job, show up on film. 21-3 Bama. We're late in the second quarter. Auburn needs to score a touchdown here. They're trying to drive in the two-minute drill, and they are going to absolutely get Alabama on this play. Pay attention to the top of your screen. They're going to give Bama a taste of their own medicine. Here is your safety, and they're going to give them a little, looks like we're doing a dig, and then a go. Just a stutter, stutter, dig, and a go. Get that safety to bite down on it. There it is. Little pump fake. Again, same medicine, except, unfortunately for Auburn, we're going to drop this pass. That hurts. It's a touchdown. Again, Bama can be beat for sure. This is football. You can beat this team, especially if you can hold up here at the line of attack long enough to beat them. It's just that you're not going to get too many chances. When you get them, you have to take advantage of them. Nice route combination again here by Auburn, knowing that that safety is most likely to come downhill and play aggressively. There it is. Again, the safety's way underneath this play. Completely came down. LSU obviously was doing this to Florida significantly in the previous game. Uh, Florida really was unable to hit them too often with this. Of course, they did with Tony on one play. Uh, it's something Florida should absolutely consider in this game against Alabama as well. Now, Bama won't always do this. There is an element of timing to this, but featuring this kind of play in the game plan uh, would be very important. Again, especially given how teams are really trying to take away the inside intermediate passes from Florida. All right, so we just missed on the previous play, but you know what? We like this formation. Let's try it again. Sometimes it's wise in football not to go away from something that just worked. We kind of liked how they're defending us. There's a safety off the screen that's kind of over top and to the inside. So rather than running a stutter go this time, let's take advantage of the leverage they're giving us, and let's just run a little corner route here and see if we can't sneak this in. 
In fact, we can. There it is. Excellent pass over the dropping defender. There is your dropping defender we just showed you. This is the exact hole in the defense that's supposed to be there. And unfortunately, or fortunately, we make this catch. Uh, but either way, again, Florida will have opportunities for these passes against Alabama. It is wise when you diagnose how they're choosing to defend some of your sets to then immediately go back to them and try something different or at least save it for later in the game and try something again. Nice work by Auburn to recognize, hey, I think we had something there. Let's go back and try another combination to attack them. Third and 10 here with 20 seconds left. Bama is playing this a little safer, certainly much safer than they might normally will. We've talked a lot about how much man they'll play, how much more aggressively they'll play. Notice here they are going to sit in a two high shell pre-snap, and they're actually going to bail into a cover four. They're going to play a cover four, and they're going to do so um, essentially off the start of the snap, but then in reality it's going to wind up being a cover three here, and we're going to try to rob any sort of dig wrap the stick. So this turns into a cover three, but this is what you like about Bama's defense. Right now if you're a quarterback, you're thinking, this looks like cover four to me. You take the snap make a read you would immediately have seen this this safety bailed this corner stayed home now you know you have cover three but again they're making you take the extra second to figure out what kind of coverage they're in i can assure you on this play bo nix isn't even thinking about the safeties at all because he's just trying to hit this out route which is not going to be a good decision however had he done a pre-snap read he would have had a much better idea that he probably would have had his drag route coming across the field which he does. This is wide open. Bama's going to give that up in this situation on third and 10. Bo Nix not going to locate it. Going to try a far hash out route. Generally the worst route you can throw against a good defense. And again, although you can't see this, this is textbook excellent defense on an out route by Alabama. They do a great job of jumping routes once they're run. They're not content just to run with you. Once they think they know what the route is, they're going to jump that route. They do and they get an interception. For Florida, it's important to, again, attack the proper area of the field. In this situation, in this situation, if you're Bo Nix, this looks a heck of a lot like four on three, a lot of what Florida saw over here. This looks like two on two. This could be your third dropper, but you could easily take the snap, take a quick read on that, see if he does in fact drop. There he is, he does drop, but you see he drops to the outside, you have a dig route coming. You would know that you could hit that, but we're not breaking down Auburn. We're breaking down Bama. And again, Bama was willing to give up that route using him to stop him either before the first down or to force a long field goal going up 21-6 at half. Instead, they get one better and they get an INT. It's third down and two for Auburn. We're now in the second half. What has Auburn drawn up? This is a nice little wrinkle. This is also kind of a classic Gus Malzahn, RIP Gus Malzahn, no longer coach of Auburn. Uh, but this is a classic little play from him. And you're going to see, oh, look at that. That's not Bo Nix. That's their ginormous tight end who's lined up as a Wildcat quarterback. And because of that, and then the shift, notice that Bama is in a cover zero here. Now, I love this. We've talked about this before. Alabama's defense is no joke. If they know that you don't have a quarterback in there or a guy that wants to throw, they're going to play aggressively. It befuddles me that teams will allow a running back or a wide receiver to take a wildcat snap and they're still back here in their too high shell, you know, with a corner off and a guy over here somewhere just giving them running yards. It's, it's not going to happen here if you're Bama. And because of that, this is a nice little play design. Again, it wouldn't surprise me if Dan Mullen tried to cook something up by putting Emory Jones and Trask on the field at the same time. We have not seen them do that at all this year, but it is the SEC title game. Expect a lot of... Uh, trick plays or at least what you would consider to be your most creative plays utilizing your talent on the field especially if Alabama is going to try to play something like that aggressively and because of that they don't come out of their defensive shift in time and then they're going to blow a call and you're going to see some communication occur here right here we see communication we see pointing who has who what's happening presumably he's saying I have him uh, except that's not what he's going to do I think he just forgets there's no safety but he is the safety there you go I'm going to hit him. Okay, that's good. That's what you want to do. Typically, you want to make contact early on. Check. Except no one's there. Uh-oh. And there we go. And we're off to the races. Uh, so again, nice little play design. One more time. Take a look. A little trickeration. Okay, it's not Bo Nix at quarterback. Okay, let's shift Bo Nix in. Alabama doesn't shift. They, talk, they kind of think about it. He's looking here. He's kind of here. He's thinking, should I go back here? 
it happens too fast. Okay, no, I'll stay down here. And then jailbreak. So nice work there by Auburn to scheme a play up. Obviously, if Florida wants to be competitive in this game, they're going to have to have at least three to four plays like this against Alabama, where they catch them off guard with something very creative. Again, taking advantage of how Alabama will typically play certain formations, certain players, and certain sets. They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And Auburn is attempting to pull out all the stops here, and they're going to copy a really good plan from Alabama, although slightly different. Let's run the old fake screenplay. So we're going to block here. We're going to say here, look, I'm a screen. It's a screen. I'm here. I'm chilling. Now, in all reality, they should have waited about another second to run this. Because had they waited one more second, this is probably a really easy throw. Instead, I think the timing of this is off. Notice how he's coming downhill here to stop this because Alabama plays aggressively against east-west teams. I think if you hold this here a little longer again, I think you're going to have a much bigger play. The timing a little bit off. They're still going to get this here. Bo Nix just not going to make even a close pass. Uh, but these are things Florida can use. Again, if, if a team is going to play Florida sets two by two like this, two by two, two by two with the safety up top, Florida can take advantage of this. Now, one of the best testaments of how good Kyle Trask is, is teams have been very unwilling to play this kind of defense against Florida. They don't want to do this because Trask is so accurate. That is an incredible compliment to Trask. So instead, what do they do? They put a third player over here, and they put a third player over here, and they play three on two and three on two. That is the sincerest compliment to Kyle Trask. It's something that apparently fans across the country have not yet really gathered that hardly any other quarterbacks uh, in the country are, are facing plus two pass defenders almost every single passing play. And most teams are very content to play just like this against opposing quarterbacks. But against Florida, Kyle Trask will make you pay for that. I do not expect Alabama to play defense like this against Florida. They will have something different. Almost certainly they'll be playing three on two on the side they feel like is the most dangerous. And they probably will trust their athletes to play two on two, at least occasionally, uh, to disrupt other facets of Florida's offense in other situations. Second and 10, Auburn's going to try another east-west pass. Bama's having none of it. Again, there's some shifts going on that you can't see. They've already shifted once. Now we're going to shift again. Take a look. We're going to back off here. Exactly what you should do on the empty set side. Going to bring our safety in this position where they can play the run or the pass. And now we're going to read this. So we're locked up, locked up, and we are coming downhill right away. There's no waiting. There's no hesitation. If you put Florida on film, typically the safety is just sitting here in no man's land doing nothing. Not so with Bama. We're coming for you. Now it looked like you thought maybe you thought you had a three on two here. You don't. Instead, you get a blitz right into the face. You get a safety coming downhill full speed. And although he misses the tackle, he turns him back to the inside where you want, where you've got help, and you lose a yard. Again, Bama will be very aggressive against any east-west pass to Florida. Florida would be extremely wise only to use the east-west passing as a decoy to generate something else. Second and four now for Auburn. This is a nice wrinkle. In fact, Florida would also do well to look at doing something similar to this. We're going to motion the tight end across here which is going to cause, again, the safety to come down here, and they're going to replace, which is good movement by Alabama. And then we're going to add a new wrinkle. Let's send our wide receiver across here on a speed sweep. Snap the ball. Again, good little play-action wrinkle. You need this. Hold these guys here, and then sling this out. Now let's watch the safety, who now has got to come from all the way here over here. We've extended his run. There it is. We've got our blockers two on two. We get a nice little clip here, although it's not the greatest block you've ever seen before. It slows them up enough, and that's a nice, easy 15-yard gain. Simple throw, safe play. There's no reason why Florida could not do something different in this game. It would be wise for them to do so, especially with a guy like Grimes uh, or even Copeland, obviously, who have the wheels to make a team pay uh, for having to shift a safety that far over. So nice wrinkle there by Auburn. It's 28-6 in the third quarter. The game is almost out of hand, but not quite. Again, take a look at how Bama's going to play this. This is the short side of the field, so the boundary side of the field. We're in a tight little box here, and we're going to jam, jam. Here's, again, the huge tight end for Auburn. He can catch passes. He's also slow. Bama is playing this perfect. This is an absolutely perfect defense, given what Auburn may do out of this. Look, jam. 
Let's chuck him all the way into the backfield. Auburn is trying to basically either throw this screen or fake the screen and throw a wheel. Either way, that ain't happening right now. You're basically taking that off the books. That's not there. And now we're dead, right? So this is how you want to stop a team throwing east-west. You say, look, you're not going to throw east-west. Do something else. Beat us some other way, but you don't get this. There's the pump fake. Here's the look. Because they've been so aggressive in here, this is slowing this whole entire play down. Everything is way slow, and now we lose 10 yards. Good aggression. Again, expect Bama to be just as aggressive east-west against Florida in the SEC title game. Later in the third quarter, Bama just exerting their will on Auburn. It's third and six. Typically, Alabama, third and six, they want to play man, and they want to bring pressure. That's what's going to happen here. Man, man. Man, man, here, and then pressure. Now here is our cover one safety. You don't know this yet. You can't see him off the screen, but he's actually gonna be our hole defender, cover one hole defender, and he is gonna come down on the running back. So again, Bama just showing off here with their fancy cover one coverage because they can, because why not? Notice the cross body jam here, which is perfectly done. Unfortunately here for Sertan, and I'm a huge Dolphins fan, so you know, loved his dad playing there for the Finns, but He's perfect. He's perfect. And then he gets the reason why you cross body jam, which is in case they try to run this way, except as he turns around, which is perfect. He's in great shape. He actually falls down. Now you can't see him here. He's going to fall down and he's going to be wide open. But Bama brought pressure as they like to do. They like to bring five. We've talked before. In fact, we talked on the LSU game. You don't need to bring six or seven. Smart teams tend to bring one more than you can block or just enough to be effective giving you pressure so they still can have integrity here on the back end. Uh, you know, silly teams like to bring more than you need. Either way, especially against Bo Nix with bad pocket presence, which you see here, he's bailing. I mean, what is he doing? What is he looking at? He wants to throw this out route here. It's not there because we're coming downhill on it. He's backpedaling. He's going the wrong way. Now he's going further away. Now he's gone. And that's not going to happen. Now, what you can't see is if he actually had just simply put his foot in the ground in the pocket here and waited to read this, he had a huge play. Huge play. Now, he's beat here on the end. He's in trouble, but he did have one. So, again, you can beat Alabama secondary. Any team that plays man, you can beat them. Florida has the athletes to beat them. Uh, but what Alabama is risking on these third down situations is you cannot make a full field read if we're bringing pressure. If the pressure gets home, you can make one or two reads at most, and we'll live with those results. And that's what Bama does there, and they wind up obviously getting a good result. All right, we have reached the last play of the what to expect from Bama breakdown. It's third down and eight. It's 42 to six. It's in the fourth quarter. Do you think Bama is calling the dogs off? Please select number one on your cell phone or watching device to indicate your vote if you think that they are not, because you would be correct. Once again, notice that we have a triangle, triangle defense with three different levels able to cover this. And it doesn't matter that it's 42 to six or there's 11 minutes left or that it's third and eight. We don't care. We're not gonna give you anything easy. Again, what does Bama like to do on third down? They like to play man and they like to play aggressive. Here we go, we're bringing the heat. Auburn says, okay, no problem. We're going to run a screenplay. Now, maybe this is why Gus Malzahn got fired. If you know anything about Alabama, you can't run a screenplay to a wide receiver because on third and eight, Bama is not going to do what Florida does and line up 10 yards off and let you have it. They're playing here aggressively. You're better off running a screenplay with your running back somewhere in here than you are with there. And Florida should be wise to do the same thing. This junk is not going to work at any point in time in the game on third down and eight or nine, Bama's going to play sound football because that's what you should do. Notice this here. We're going to lock up here in the bunch. There it is. He's coming to block this guy. Well, guess what? I've done you one better. You can't really block me if I've already hit the receiver the ball's supposed to go to. Bo Nix is going to do what Bo Nix does and just panic and throw the ball right here. Why not? He looks like a receiver. He's open. Maybe he's my guy, except that's not your guy. And that's going to turn into a big return. So one more time. This is a, there's a reason why this is good defense. This is how you play modern day sets, just like these. You see Bama do it almost every single time. It is the meta strategy. It is the right way. You see Florida do it almost never. Not a good situation. That's why teams take advantage of it against Florida, and that's why teams struggle against Bama. And look at that. Again, that just looks absurd at this level to see a pass being made like that. 
looks like a play they've never run before. Uh, but I can assure you against other teams, Auburn runs this play quite successfully. So great work by Bama. They line up correctly. They do what they need to be done or they do what needs to get done. They get themselves a nice pick late in the game by staying aggressive. You can call that a championship mentality, if you will. Well, that does bring us to the end of our film breakdown of Alabama. It's now four weeks in a row we've seen them. We've got tons and tons of tape on Bama. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown. As always, if you like the content, like the video, sub to the channel, check out the podcast, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon to support our efforts, and leave me any feedback that you have, how to improve this, you want them longer, you want them shorter, you want something else. Just let me know. I'll see what I can do. Until next time, I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast.